Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White and this is Jason's Weird Reads and today I am going to do my wrap-up for the week of weird. I know. I know I'm a little late. But there's uh, a couple of things that came up while uh, I was doing my week of weird. It was interesting because uh, when when um, Crystal approached me asking uh, what date we should uh, do this for, I picked a week where I thought it was going to be nice and quiet so I could spend my time making videos and dedicating my time to the week of weird. But of course, something at work came up and I ended up being a heck of a lot more busier than I thought I would be. Basically what happened was I had to switch to nights and when I work nights, because I work 12 hour shifts, I pretty much don't make any videos. And uh, during that, those two nights I went to nights, they were nights of hell. They were, they were literally, literally <laughs> uh, living nightmares. And, uh, and so no videos were made. I don't typically make videos when I'm on the night shift anyway, because the night shift just sucks up all my time, all my free time. So I, I read less, pretty much, and I also uh, I also shoot no videos. That's why sometimes my content is a little bit spotty. Anyways, let's get on to my wrap up here. Um, the week of weird was a lot of fun, despite the work stuff, and I ended up reading five novels or five stories anyway. Uh, there's a couple, actually, I think they're pretty much all novels or novellas. And so let's get into it. Uh, the first book I read for this, I started about half a week early, I think it was, and I started The Jackal by uh, Aaron E. Adams. Now, the reason why I picked this book is because a lot of the reviews I heard, people were saying how weird it was. And about halfway through, I was like, this, this isn't weird. This isn't like weird fiction by any means. But it does actually end up becoming a little bit weird by the end when the whole thing wraps up. Basically, it's a, the story is about a, a young woman who returns to her hometown to attend her best friend's wedding. And while there, her friend's uh, child goes missing into the woods. And this brings our protagonist to realize that something like this has been happening throughout uh, her memory. Uh, this happened before. And, it, and as she investigates her, friend, her friend's daughter's uh, disappearance, she realizes that this has happened a lot more than just the one time when they were all children. And w what it comes down to is somebody is uh, taking uh, children of color and they're doing something to them in the woods. <laughs> it's a very creepy story at points. It's also very much a, a, a bit of a, uh, a mystery. Uh, it comes off really strongly as a mystery. And like I said, when you reach the end of the story, you realize what's going on. And that's when the the weirdness sort of kicks in. And there is definitely something weird going on at the end. So don't go into this book thinking that it's a piece of weird fiction because ultimately it's not. But there is some, some weirdness at the end. Overall, I really enjoyed The Jackal. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, if it was for anything else, I might have DNF'd it, only because it's not at all what I was expecting. But like I said, I'm glad I stuck through it because it was really good all the way through. Um, and I I recommend it, especially if you like the, uh, not really murder mystery necessarily, especially if you like amateur detective type stories, uh, or even like police procedural in a sense, where you have a character going around questioning people. Um, yeah, so ultimately, I liked it, and I recommend it if, if that sounds cool to you. It's it's well-written, the characters are strong, but uh, be warned, there are some really nasty, gory scenes that took me by surprise. Next up, I read Help Meet by Nabin Ruthnam. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. Uh, this is a story uh, that takes place at the turn of the 19th, uh, or the 1900s, the 20th century. So it's like 1901 or something like that. And the, the two main characters are a married couple. And uh, the husband has this terrible disease that's eating away at his flesh. It's not like flesh eating disease. It's, it's kind of worse than that because it, it infects his whole body. Uh, I don't want to get into too much of the details because this is a serious body horror uh, piece of weird fiction. 
and especially when you get again to the ending where uh, the explanation as to what's going on with the husband um, uh, manifests and and uh, you see the outcome and uh, it's it's such a wild story I, I really really enjoyed this it took me by surprise I didn't really know much about it except for the fact that there is some body horror involved well let me tell you it's, it's not just some body horror this whole novella is all body horror and it's terrifying just imagining what this man has gone through and is going through it's it's awful <laughs> uh, so because he has this terrible disease he wants to go back to his his home uh, where he grew up and that's where he wants to die and so when they go there uh, you learn um, you learn basically what's going on and uh, why he's going through these things and uh, and into its inevitable outcome which it's it's not actually inevitable it's it's weird I mean, it's weird fiction, right? So, so it goes into some very strange places. Um, I'm trying, as you can tell, I'm trying to skirt around exactly what happens because uh, it's a short book, and also to say what what's going on would spoil the whole thing. I went into it completely blind, and I think honestly, you'll benefit going into it fairly blind too, just knowing what um, what the basics are. And honestly, this might be a favorite of the end of the year. I absolutely loved the way this book was written, or novella I should say. Um, I loved the characters. Uh, the characters really felt real to me. Um, the husband and wife had a, a strange understanding that might seem unconventional, uh, a strange understanding of each, each other that might seem unconventional, but the author did a really great job at, at making it believable, believable regardless. So I highly recommend Help Meet. Uh, it's, it, like I said, it took me by surprise. It's a, a wonderful, uh, wonderfully weird little story. And it's, uh, it's published by Underbo Undertow Publishing, uh, which is, or Publications, I should say. They're doing some really, really fascinating stuff. You should go check them out. If I remember, I'll put a, a link down there in the darkness to where you can go find more Undertow publishing's titles because like I said everything I've read by them is like top-notch stuff all right and speaking of uh, undertow publishings I read after help meet I read talisite or the talisite by Rebecca Campbell this <laughs> okay the the concept for this story is uh, really interesting it's takes place during World War one during the war like on the Western Front and what you have are these uh, Frankenstein-like monsters that are built by uh, by scientists, mad scientists, you could say, uh, of body parts. So you get these giant beasts on the battlefield that are stitched together pieces of dead bodies. And they go storming through, excuse me, no man's land, creating havoc, and they're hard to take down. They're almost like uh, the invention of tanks, uh, if you think about it. And it, that alone is just horrifying. Um, I really loved this tale as well, and it could also be a contender for the year-end uh, top, my top 10 list for 2023. Uh, it was a really wild ride. My biggest complaint about it, though, is I wish that we had more time in no man's land with these creatures because, and I think it's important to mention because my description is similar to the, the description on the back of the book where you're gonna go into it thinking that this book is all about uh, battles and these, these giant creatures and battles when it's actually more about the creation. We, the main character is one of the scientists. It's a, a woman who creates these things and and then puts them, uh, gives them over to uh, the army who will, she works for the army, but once she's done creating them, they're sent off into battle. So you don't get too much time with them on the battle. That's, that's what I wanted. But despite that, this is still a very, uh, an awesome story. I think, honestly, uh, it would have taken more time, obviously, but it would have been interesting had she, uh, Rebecca Campbell added a, uh, maybe a couple more plot points, or at least one more plot point with an added character on the field experiencing with these 
things. I was thinking, and this is just hypothetical, obviously. I'm not saying that this is the way it has to be because I'm smarter than everyone else. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it would have been really interesting if there was another character and therefore another plot point added, or at least character arc added into the story where you have the scientist creating these things and you have the soldier who like commands these creatures and then maybe their stories sort of come together at some point. I, I think that would have been interesting though. Um, uh, but it's still a very good book on its own. Like I said, it's, it's definitely a contender for my top 10. And it's by Undertow Publish or Publications. And these guys are doing some really awesome stuff. Like I said, go check them out. They do. Uh, I don't know if uh, the publisher would consider the stuff he publishes weird fiction or if it's just uh, dark literature. Cause some people are like that. But it, he's definitely like one of the biggest uh, publishers of weird fiction out there uh, right now and he, his his stuff is always top quality all right next up I read uh, songs of a dead dreamer and grim scribe by Thomas Ligotti I listened to the audio version of this because I read this a few years ago and uh, so it's a reread for me but one of my favorite narrators and authors uh, he narrated this and that's the reason why I wanted to listen to and I mean, it was just released as an audiobook so here's the book that I read uh, a little while ago um, it's such a, an interesting book uh, honestly, but uh, it, going back to uh, where what I was talking about before I interrupted myself in such a weird way <laughs> is uh, uh, John Paget, one of my favorite authors, and uh, he does the Vestarian Literary Journal. Uh, so he doesn't write very much these days, but you should check out the Vestarian Literary Journal because uh, those stories are all authors who who write Ligotti esque type stories. So. Uh, it, it's released once or twice a year. It's always packed full of really good, uh, strange, and weird fiction. But anyways, getting back to this and the audio version, I, I had to listen to it because John Padgett, as I said, is one of my favorite narrators. He never lets you down and he does a wonderful job uh, doing these stories. Um, it was funny because I was talking uh, with Mindy over at Mindy's Book Journey. Um, she read this too for the week of weird. And I she she mentioned something in her video because she she read this for the week of weird and she mentioned that these stories you know they're kind of hard to hold on to in your mind you kind of forget what they are soon after you read them and i had to agree with that because i went into this uh not remembering too much about what i read just a few things i remember obviously but but it was only like a few years ago i read this and it was like it, most of it was gone and then after reading them again uh, the stories, they just sort of slip out of your head, and, and, and it's really weird. But uh, the one thing I really love about this collection of short stories, or actually it's two collections uh, bound into, into one, uh, the one thing I really love about these collections is how, I was thinking about this while listening to it, how Lovecraftian they are, and yet they're not Lovecraft they're not Lovecraftian. Even the stories that are deliberately Lovecraftian are more Ligotti than Lovecraft. Um, and it's hard to explain exactly why I say that. It's because they're all dark and dreary and full of pessimistic philosophy. Um, and they're full of cults and, <laughs> and the strangest things you can, uh, you can imagine. Um, and it's almost as though if you were to believe in reincarnation for a moment that Lovecraft died and was reborn into Thomas Ligotti because the writing style is very similar in a sense uh, the the writing is very beautiful itself but Ligotti avoids using words like you know words that are you've never seen before he'll use language that you're all like Lovecraft will do that he'll use words that you've never heard of before but uh, Love, uh, Ligotti will use words that, that you're familiar with, uh, everyday words, and he'll make them into this beautiful soup of darkness. <laughs> and, uh, and he does that wonderfully within these two collections. 
Um, there are some uh, standout favorites. See if I can uh, pick out a few favorites. The first story, The Frolic, is one of my favorites. It's a very interesting uh, <laughs> story. Uh, there's a Christmas story, actually. A Christmas. There's a couple cr uh, mentions of Christmas in here, but I think that I'm going to return to the Christmas Eves of Aunt Elise on uh, around Christmas time, maybe even every year. It's uh, one of my favorites. Um, the tr Dr. Thos makes a repeated appearance within all these stories. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, so The Troubles of Dr. Thos was really cool. Uh, Masquerade of a Dead Sword, a tragedy. Uh, Dr. Voke and Mr. Veach, those were all really good stories. Uh, Dr. Uh, Locrian's Asylum, uh, The Sect of the Idiot was really fun. Um, the music of the moon was kind of weird and, and great. Vestarian, the the short story that uh, John Paget uses to uh, uh, for his uh, Vestarian literary journal magazine. Um, let's see here. Nethiscurial was really good. The Dreaming in Nortown was uh, one of the longer stories in here, I think. And it was really good. Uh, there's so many good stories in here. I can't recommend this enough. Uh, it's uh, it's some of the weirdest stories I've ever read that I mean I think a lot of the darkness is uh, that like the dark sort of uh, pessimistic philosophy that 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 reeks and soaks Ligotti's fiction is uh, is what makes it so weird because a lot of authors will uh, incorporate their philosophy their personal philosophy into their work but i don't think anyone does it quite as mischievously in a sense that thomas Ligotti does uh that's that's the best way i can wrap wrap up thomas Ligotti. i think he might become a favorite author of mine except for the fact that a lot of the stories uh just sort of slip through the cracks and you have to reread them and again to remember them only for them to slip through the cracks again and i don't know why that is all right, the last book I read for the week of weird is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. And this one, uh, although it has a weird sort of premise to it, ended up not being very much in the weird fiction genre, at least not to me anyway. If you read it and you thought it was uh, belongs in the weird fiction genre, then by all means, it, it works. I really enjoyed this one as well, both, although I would say it's probably my least favorite of, uh, of the five that I read. Um, it's, a uh, it's, it's a story about fungus and mushrooms and, uh, that's all I'm going to say because actually there's one more thing I'm going to say about this, uh, uh, novella. Actually, I think it's just a short novel, um, is that it's a retelling basically of the house of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. And so you have a, a sister who's dying and the brother and the guy who's visiting and there's all these mushrooms. Uh, and uh, the mushrooms are somehow involved and it, it gets pretty interesting oh and there's like these weird undead rabbit creatures uh it was a lot of fun but i don't know i'm gonna have to read more t kingfisher because <coughs> it's my understanding that this is what t kingfisher does is they take like old classic uh horror stories like the 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 popular ones and sort of changes them into uh into modern retellings and that's something i'm absolutely fascinated about so i'm looking forward to reading more t king fisher this one was a bit of a miss for me i don't know what the disconnect was but uh i guess i just wanted a little bit more weirdness in it and maybe some stronger characters some more like more care i don't know i i wanted more character driven i guess i don't know i, I can't i can't articulate why this was a bit of a miss for me it just didn't just didn't do it and I can't figure out why uh, but I, I didn't hate it I did enjoy myself there's a lot of interesting things that were going on in this book all right so uh, I read a lot more than I planned and also you, you may have noticed if you read or watched my uh, TBR video that there's only one of these books that I had on my TBR <laughs> there's a couple of uh, uh, books that I started reading for this that were on my TBR that I DNF'd because uh, one reason or another, and you're gonna have to watch my next video, which is going to be uh, 
uh, my wrap up, my recent reads wrap up from the hip issue because uh, I have a lot of books that I've read since then and I, I decided to take these off that list because that video probably would have ended up being close to an hour and nobody wants an hour long video in their to watch later uh, playlist so <laughs> so that's it for now thank you for watching if you made it this far please leave me a little zombie emoticon down there in the darkness and I'll leave you some zombies myself thank you for watching keep being safe and keep being creative I'll catch you guys in the next bookish video